Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting storm clouds and moon and I'm sipping on some wild berry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. So this painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Adelaide Robertson. She submitted it when I called for photos. <laughs> so I have a benefit for my Patreons, whereby every now and again, I'll put out a call for them to send me photos. I'll select some of those photos and turn them into YouTube tutorials. So I will, as a thank you, send Adelaide this original painting. So I hope she enjoys it. Um, so if you're interested in learning how you too could submit some photographs for me to turn into uh, tutorials, or if you'd like to learn more about the membership program, I do have all of that information down below in the video description. In the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, ultramarine blue, deep yellow, fire red, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have two brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And then I have a quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And I'll probably just call these small and large <laughs> as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same types of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's it. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my smaller brush to pre-mix a custom color. I'm going to be using black, white, and brown in this step, and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna first create a, a gray color that we'll be using for the dominant color in the sky, and then we'll be, I'm gonna start the top of the canvas with that custom gray that we make, and then we're gonna get it to go a little bit lighter as it comes down towards this bottom kind of left-hand quadrant of the, of the um, canvas. So I have pre-mixed my custom gray on my palette here. This is it right in through here. How I achieved this is just black and white. So I'm just going for a mid to dark tone gray that is on, for me, the cooler side, so I'm just using black and white. I didn't make it super cool with any blue, but for me, my, my straight black and white creates a nice cool gray, and you'll see that as we go through the process, how I will warm up certain tones throughout the rest of the painting. So this is where I'm gonna start. What I'm gonna do once I've got my color, I'm gonna put my mixing tool away, take out my large paintbrush, and I'm just gonna start up at the top using a left to right kind of crisscross type of a brush stroke. I am going for pretty full coverage on this first uh, pass, but when I get down towards where I'm gonna be uh, making a gradient of sorts, 
it'll be okay if I don't get a, a flat coat. So what I'll do every now and again is just kind of work my brush back and forth just to make sure that that's nice and flat. And then as I come down the canvas, I know I want this bottom kind of left-hand corner to be a little bit lighter. So I am going to start introducing white and a little bit of brown into my color as I'm coming down the this left-hand corner. So I'm still just picking up my custom gray. Every now and again, you see me go back and forth to flatten it out or to make sure I didn't miss any spots. I'm gonna put some more of my custom gray over here. And then once I've got it, so this is maybe four, three or four inches away from the bottom of my canvas. And then this is about at the halfway point. Now I'm gonna start introducing brown and white on my dirty brush. So about equal parts, about equal parts of brown and white are on the on my dirty brush. And I'm just gonna start intermingling this in with that gray. And in a second, I'm gonna stop picking up the, I, I won't pick up any more gray, so I'm just picking up brown and white as I come down here. And because I'm not gonna wash that gray off of my brush, but I'm not picking up any more, it'll work its way off of my brush or work its way off of my brush enough to change the tonal value of this gray into a warmer type of a gray. So again, just brown and white as I come down towards this bottom left-hand corner. And again, still just that crisscross type of brush stroke in order to give myself a, a decent blend, but I don't need it to blend all the way at this point. I really am just looking for something that we'll be able to utilize for building um, some nice atmospheric dimension and the clouds on top of it. If you feel this left to right crisscross is not working out for you, you could always do a circular type of brush stroke as well. You just want to keep it consistent. So if you do the circular down here, you'll want to carry that circular up top as well so it all looks cohesive with that brush stroke and how that um, paint is appearing for this particular painting. This doesn't, that doesn't hold true for all paintings, but if you, for this particular one, I'd want that, um, that background to look pretty similar with the brush stroke from top to bottom, just because I know how I'm gonna be building this and it'll work out the best for me in that, in that way. So if you change brush strokes, just make sure that you apply that same thought process through the, whole, um, air, through the whole canvas for this first layer. And then once I've got this done, I will be using the same brush stroke, or the same brush stroke, the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it, thinking that's pretty good. And just go allow for a little bit more blending in through here, there we go. So you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint atmospheric dimension. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my large paintbrush to paint, but again, I'm gonna use my smaller brush to premix a custom color. So what we're gonna be doing in this step is we're adding atmospheric dimension to the sky. So what this is gonna do is it's the, I am going off of a photo reference that is emulating a stormy sky where it's really dark up towards the moon, and then the atmosphere just seems to get lighter and mistier and kind of more tannish, smoky type of uh, atmosphere as it's coming down towards the, a big cloud that's gonna be down at the bottom of our composition. So I wanna add that, I wanna do a second layer on my sky and add some of that dimension into that um, into the sky behind what's gonna be that cloud and behind what'll be our moon. So I'm gonna paint again with my large bristle brush, but I'm using my smaller one to premix a custom color. I'm going to be using in this step my premixed gray, and I'm also using brown, white, and yellow to create a custom tan color. So I have pre-mixed my color here on my palette. So depending on the brown you're using, you could get away with just using 
brown and white to create a tan, but my brown and white tends to give me this real kind of dull type of tan. So I am going to opt to add a touch of yellow into it. So it's more of like a golden tan type of a color. And then when that gets put on top of my cool gray, it will resemble or have almost a little bit of a greenish hue like you see in a stormy sky right before that that thunderous you know activity happens up in the sky how sometimes it gets to have that little greenish tinge to it so this will this will help us accomplish that really um, interesting atmospheric dimension. So that's the color I'm going for. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to be starting up. Oh, and I'm using blue too. I forgot to mention I'm going to use some blue too. I'm going to be starting up in my the top of my canvas. In my photo reference, I do detect a little bit of a darkish blue color up at the top. So I'm going to be adding my gray plus a little bit of that dark blue. Then I'm just going to fade it into my regular gray. And then we're going to put some of that new color down in through here, that tannish color. And then down at the bottom, it doesn't really matter what happens because you're going to have that big cloud on top of it. So I'm going to start with just my custom gray first because I know that I want um, to put a second coat over here. And in this step, instead of using that long crisscross motion, I am going to be using a circular type of motion because I really want softness in this atmospheric dimension. And for me, using this circular type of brush stroke is gonna allow me to have a real kind of airy type of blend. Now I'm picking up both my gray and blue on my brush at the same time to put a little bit of blue up here in this upper left. I know it's going to dry a little bit darker and if you wanted yours even darker you could certainly add some black to it. But you can see here this is lighter than here. This is wet and this is dry. So I know that that's going to happen to my paint so I plan for it. But again if you wanted to go darker you certainly could. So then um, I put my blue up here. Now I'm just continue to pick up my uh, custom gray and I'm just going to bring that down in through here and then I want it to stay nice and dark over here on the right hand side so I'm just going to allow for myself to just put a second coat over in through here and then as I come down I would say maybe about halfway down the canvas that's when I'm going to start to add my my new custom color so I'm about halfway there right now so that's pretty good bringing this down just a little bit further on this side because I want it to be pretty dark behind the top of this cloud in through here so that's looking pretty good to me so now I'm going to start adding my custom uh, tan so I'm going to go with my gray plus a little bit of my custom tan just a little bit on my brush because I want them to um, intermingle with each other right now so I'm going to just start uh, using the circular brush stroke and allowing them to just transition into each other. I can pick up a little bit more on my dirty brush and this is, you'll start to see it get lighter and lighter as I stop picking up the gray. So that's, that's going to be the trick here and I'm just allowing it to make sure that I've got a pretty decent blend. Now I'm not going to pick up any of my gray anymore. I'm just going to keep picking up that, uh, custom tan and you'll see how it's it just magically morphs into this really stormy color. I'm going to put maybe a little bit more lightness up this top left hand side in a minute and down here in a minute but first I want to get this custom tan to integrate with that background color that I had uh, started with. So again just kind of bringing this over in through here making sure that it blends up but you can see I'm leaving it really kind of soft and smoky-esque. <laughs> so my big cloud's gonna come in through here. I wanna get this to just kind of blend down in through here, but I don't necessarily want it to be all this tan. So I'm just gonna pick up a touch of white with white, <laughs> just a touch of white I'm on my dirty brush, and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of lightness down in through here, maybe a little lightness kind of coming up in through here. 
just to have this sitting behind the uh, big cloud that I'm going to be doing in a little while. And I'm, and I'm working these edges so they are nice and soft as they transition into that other color. It's, it's a super cool photo <laughs> with this really great atmosphere behind it. So over and through here again, I don't need to do anything. This is pretty good because this is what's going to sit behind my storm clouds here. And then I kind of want just a little bit of lightness up here. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just you're going to use the remnants, which would be these light colors that are on the tip of my brush right now. And I'm just going to see if I can get a little extra oomph up here. Yeah, that's not enough for me. So I'm going to pick up just a teeny tiny bit of white paint again just itty bitty bitty bit i'm somewhere in this vicinity just adding a teeny tiny bit of additional lightness or airiness within these within the atmosphere you don't have to do this if you don't want to if you feel that you know you've got enough happening and if it goes too light for you just revert to the um gray that you had initially put on there and then, or if you want more of the tan, go into the tan. But I would recommend just kind of waiting until it dries before you cast too much judgment and make it uh, too, uh, with too, mu too many details in here uh, because it will dry a little bit darker and that'll give it s some additional softness. But I'm thinking that I'm digging this, so I am gonna call it. And then for the next step, I'm gonna be using my, uh, drawing utensil. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, make any little adjustments you want. You could even do another layer if you wanted to, and then um, get out a drawing utensil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our moon and our storm cloud. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have something that resembles the shape of a moon and a big cloud. <laughs> I'm gonna have my moon up in the top right hand corner because again, I'm emulating a photo so I'm putting mine in a pretty similar place as the photo but you could certainly put yours anywhere you want you could have a full moon you could have a crescent moon you could do whatever you want but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle and then I will manipulate it into the um the partial moon that it is so I'm going to come all the way up to the right hand corner of my canvas I'm going to come over about two and a half to three inches to the left and then come down about two and a half to three inches. So somewhere in through here is where I'm gonna start my center of my circle. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to make myself a mark that's gonna be about an inch and three quarters to the right. So somewhere in this vicinity is gonna be the first marker that I make. Now what I can do, since this is the center of my circle and this is one of my markers, I can take anything as a measuring tool. It could be a pencil, it could be a ruler, it could be a paintbrush, and I can say, okay, how far away from that center did I make this first mark? And then I can make as many marks at that same distance away from the center of my, away from that center. Make You could make 50 if you wanted to. You could also just whip out like a, a Tupperware cover or something like that and draw around it. My circle is, um, I think, like almost three inch or three and a half inches um, in diameter width and height. So that's that's about the size of mine. So I'm just making a whole bunch of marks and then you can connect those marks in a circular type of a shape. And don't worry at this stage if it's not super perfect, you can certainly modify it during the painting process, but this is where I'm gonna start. So the, the photo that I'm emulating has a little bit of the bottom left clipped off of the moon that's not visible. So once you have your circle, you can take from any point and just kind of clip it in a little bit. Um, that'll give you a more realistic partial moon than if you tried to 
um, you know, just freehand it because you've got the legitimate circle and now you're just clipping part of it off. So if you wanted a crescent moon, you could of course clip this whole piece off and leave that or, you know, make your crescent a little bit more. So once I've got the part taken off that I, that I want to take off, I can use a little bit of water on my brush to erase that exterior chalk mark. And now I have the shape of my moon that I want. Just gonna dry that off a little bit, something like that. Now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna do the, and again, don't worry if it's not perfect at this point because you've got lots of painting to do and you can you can um, smooth out these corners and or the sides and all that good stuff. So that's looking pretty good for me. So now I'm going to draw a outline for my big storm cloud. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom left-hand corner and I'm gonna come up maybe about an inch or so, somewhere in through there. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna come up, if this is about halfway up or down my canvas, I'm maybe about three inches below that, somewhere in through here. And I'm gonna connect these with a big bumpy line. I do wanna make sure that my cloud kind of overlaps the atmospheric dimension. So you may end up with a bigger or smaller cloud, whatever works for you. Or if you're now discovering, ooh, I, I needed to bring this down further. You could certainly bring down that atmospheric dimension a little bit further so you can overlap this cloud on top of it. So once I've got my two markers, I'm gonna just kind of make myself a nice kind of bumpy type of um, shape. This again is just the start of the cloud. It's just gonna give us a, a place where we can say, okay, well, this is kind of the parameters of it. I don't need it to be, um, my outline to be anything super detailed, just something that's gonna start me through the painting process. And that's all I'm gonna do. So I'm going to be using my, um, I'm gonna use my large bristle brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, take out your large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer to our storm cloud. I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are brown, gray, tan, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put kind of a road map of sorts <laughs> in place as to where I want all the dark marks to go and the light marks. And then in a future step, we'll come back and finesse it so it looks more realistic. Uh, so what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna put my dark areas in. I'm gonna be using a combination of my gray plus a touch of brown. So not a lot, just a real little bit on your brush. We're doing more of a dry brush type of, uh, not necessarily a dry brush type of effect, but definitely something where we don't need a lot of paint on our brush. We're gonna be using the bristles to kind of scrub it out and allow for some good um, uh, soft edges. So I, I wanna have a real dark area in through here. So where this kind of comes in, there's a real dark area in um, the photo. So I wanna just make sure that I emulate that, just giving myself this real dark part of the cloud in through here. And this is one of those things when you're trying to emulate a, a photograph, you don't necessarily have to bring it exactly in the same place that that photo is, but allowing for these um, high identifying areas to, to uh, show up. I know that in the photo there's this real dark cloud that sits behind this big brighter one. So even if I don't get all the edges exactly as they are in the photo, I'm giving it a great likeness to what I'm seeing in that photo and it's going to translate as a good representation of that photo. So I've got that dark area back there. Now I know that there's other dark areas but I don't need as much paint on my brush. So I just kind of wipe my brush off. I've got the top of this cloud is a little bit on the darker side. So I'm using that circular kind of scrubbing type of uh, brush stroke, but again, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. So this is allowing me to get these real soft kind of divots, if you will, in, in the cloud formation. There's a pretty dark area up and through here, but I feel like it's a little bit more brown. So I'm gonna pick up more brown on my brush and then just wipe it off on my paper towel. Again, even if I don't get it 
this the same tone right now that's fine i can certainly adjust it as i go through the future process of um, putting the details and stuff on so i'm just kind of watching my photo there's some dark areas up and through here so i'm just trying to emulate where those are there's this little kind of tiny dark area in through there and this kind of is a light cloud that's going to pop over here but there's i see some little dark marks in it so i'm just going to kind of make these dark areas a little bit in through here and then there's a pretty big dark area down in through here somewhere kind of connects a little bit up and through here so i'm really watching just watching for a color pattern right now i'm not trying to go for everything being exactly perfect i just want to I'm, I'm seeing some dark areas so that's what i'm trying to emulate so once i've got the dark areas on there now i'm going to start picking up my tan on my dirty brush so i'm just picking up a little bit of tan on my dirty brush and i can start laying in where some of these lighter areas are so i'm really just kind of looking to connect those dark areas to the lighter areas um, and give myself a, a second coat on the, on the the cloud itself so these are just going to be the little areas in between the dark areas that i just made so just really softly kind of allowing for um, that to happen so a little bit more tan plus a teeny tiny bit of white is going on my brush now just a teeny tiny bit on my dirty brush i see a little bit of a lighter cloud in through here we've got a little bit up in through here and these clouds up and through here are little pops of of brightness and we'll add different tonal values to them on a future step but again this is the my building process that allows me to just take things and break things that could seemingly be really difficult and just break them down into these basic steps that is not overwhelming for my brain to comprehend and it allows me to just kind of build it in this progressive way so i'm going to pick up tan plus a teeny tiny bit more of white again teeny tiny bit of white and i'm gonna uh i've got some lighter clouds over on this side so i can just kind of uh pop those on over here just don't want to put too much paint <laughs> so again less is more we can always add more it's just it's difficult to take away once it's on there <laughs> so this is looking pretty good and then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you've got a good base coat or first step to your cloud done you can put this large brush away take out your small bristle brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the moon. I'm using my small bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are my gray, white, and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first create kind of a gradient of sorts where it's going to, the moon is actually just gonna disappear into that sky. I don't know how it does it because the moon is round, <laughs> but it just disappears into the sky. So we're gonna make it just that edge just disappear and then it, it's going to get lighter and lighter as it goes over onto this right hand side i'm going to be using very little bit of paint on my brush to um, kind of give myself my edge of my moon i don't need it to be a super crisp edge i do want it to be bright but i don't need it to be super crisp so that's why i'm using this brush to it because it'll allow me to make it on the softer side and then we'll just come come in and make some little crater type of marks so i'm going to start with a teeny tiny bit of white and gray on my brush so just and that's going to be the name of this moon game is less is more so i put paint on my brush and then i'm just going to dab it off on my paper towel and my paper towel is going to be my savior in this step because i do not want a lot of paint on my brush i can always add more so i'm going to take it over here on this left hand side right it, as i know i want it to fade into the um the sky itself that's kind of where i just want to start so i can get my tonal value as dark as i want it here first and then i'll i'll move my way over so i just wipe my brush off a little bit more because i want it to be a little bit darker so i wipe my brush off and i picked up more of my 
um, my gray so I can get this side to just disappear. That's what I'm looking to do. I want this side of the moon to disappear in my background. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just going to get it to, and I know that my gray is going to be uh, lighter when it's wet. So again, my head is planning for that. And then I just kind of let that blend right in. And now it's going to, I'm going to allow it to get a little bit lighter and lighter as I go towards that right hand side. I'm going to be using this circular scrubbing motion in the middle. And then over, um, when I go to the edges, I'll use a more, um, defined kind of back and forth left to right brush stroke. So again, just a little bit of my gray and white as I move over towards this right hand side, allowing myself to have kind of a messy gradient of sorts. So it gets a little bit lighter as I'm coming over here. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit more white on my dirty brush. And again, less is more. <laughs> no, I, I'm not going to be able to say that enough on this step. And then I'm just going to kind of bring it right out to my chalk mark. And if you find as you go through this process that your, that your outline is not perfect, this is where you can kind of just softly manipulate it a little bit. Again, those edges can be soft, so it's all right if they're almost, and when I mean soft, I mean kind of fuzzy-esque. Um, so it's all right if you've got it a little bit on that fuzzier side, that'll give it just a you know, a little bit more, maybe it'll look like it's glowing around the edges. So you can certainly just kind of go like this around those edges and that might allow it to glow a little bit on those edges. And that's what a good bristle brush will allow you to keep that paint moving kind of until it dries, allowing for you to make for those um, adjustments uh, as, it, as it dries. So I'm just kind of letting myself run out of paint right now allowing for give myself a little bit more texture on that moon so now that i've got that established if i feel i need to do anything else around those edges if i feel it's not crisp enough all i need to do is just wash my brush wash it make sure that there's no white on it and go back into my gray color and i can just take my gray and just go right around those edges because we didn't do anything to the color up here. If you had manipulated that color, if you had made it lighter or darker or had some kind of gradient up there, then you might need to work it a little bit harder. But if you, if you did need to make any little corrections along the way, but if you didn't um, make, if you just use that solid gray up and through there, then a correction around that moon would be really simple to do. And then once you've got that, whatever way looks good to you. I think I actually need to maybe, oh, that looks pretty good. I was thinking I needed to um, maybe bring this up a little bit, but I'm, I'm thinking that that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna start uh, advancing the craters and stuff. So I wanted to not look, my gray is super cool. It almost looks blue to me. So I wanted to have a little bit more um, shine or uh, warmth to it, light established to it. So I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna use a tiny bit of brown and white. So brown and white, just like we did on that base coat down on the bottom of the canvas. And this is where I'm gonna start to add my lighter areas. So if I want there to be some lightness up in through here, again, this is just brown and white. And you could certainly pre-mix yourself a color if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just gonna use brown and white, uh, just a tiny bit on my brush. I'm, I'm watching my photo to see where my uh, brighter spots are. There's a pretty bright spot over here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in. <laughs> and the edge of the moon is pretty bright over here on the right-hand side. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just watching that, that color pattern as I'm, as I'm creating this. There's some, um, Fun looks like cratery stuff kind of coming up in through here little essence over here I'm leaving some dark marks because I see that they are still there in the photo so this is where I am allowing for myself to kind of create this crater-esque type of look and I'm just watching what areas are lighter and darker than others there's a little bit of lightness in through here, it looks like a pretty decent gradient of sorts that just kind of disappears down here. So I'm just controlling the quantity of paint on my brush. As I go through this, the 
the more pain I have, the brighter it's going to be. The more I allow myself to kind of run out of paint, that's when it's going to start to be more transparent and translucent and show what's behind it because I'm using this firm bristle brush to dry brush it and allow it to um, see the stuff behind it. So I'm just kind of understanding I hardly have any paint on my brush right now so I can use that to my advantage. And then I feel like I need to get a little bit lighter up at the top so I'm putting a tiny bit more white on my brush and I'm just going to kind of elevate this top area just a little bit more. And then once I've got the majority of um, the marks and stuff on here, what I will definitely do because I know my paint you know can turn a little lighter or darker as it dries I will let mine dry and then if I feel I have any additional kind of marks or lightness or darkness that I want to incorporate or even warmth like I can I can pick up a tiny bit more brown on my dry brush and I can just add a little bit more warmth right onto some of those craters make it look like it's got a little bit more dirt on it so to speak so you can get it to to um, stand out from that sky a little bit more by just adding this different uh, a different type of tone to it and then I'm just going to kind of keep I just put a tiny bit more white on my brush going to just allow for this in through here it's a little bit lighter in through here as well and then I would just kind of keep fiddling with it I am going to be using um, the same brush for the next step so once you've got your moon it is bright and beautiful as you want it to be you can wash and dry and if anything goes wrong just go back to the gray and start over <laughs> you can wash and dry this small brush and if you can ever stop get ready for the next step <laughs> all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our storm cloud i'm using my small bristle brush the colors that i'm going to use are white yellow, red, tan, and if I need to go into any other colors like my gray, I will, but I'm not sure I'm going to need to, but if I do, I will, and I'll let you know. <laughs> so what I'm really looking to do here is just add the fluffiness to this cloud and just make sure that everything is finessed the way that I want it to be. It's... It, I, I want to add more dimension to it and in order to do that I kind of have to come in with another tone of lightness. I don't want to just throw white on here because the the stormy cloud that I'm seeing in this um, photo has all I, I'm seeing like pinkish hues and yellow hues and gray hues and brown hues so I'm gonna um, create another light color to use as my accent fluffy color <laughs> and then we'll incorporate it with these dark tones that we have and we're just going to build some great dimension. So I have already pre-mixed, I'm going to call it beige on my um, palette here. So here is my my tan over here and that's what I'm going to call beige. So what this is, it's my tan plus white, yellow, and red. So I take my tan and I'm going to add white to make it a little bit lighter, but the lightness is just going to make it kind of more um, that color lighter when I want to add a different temperature to it. So I want it to be a little bit more on the warmer side. So I'm going to add yellow and red, which is orange. So I'm going to add a touch of yellow and a touch of red to it. So this is going to give me almost like a very light pale skin tone which is pretty similar to mine <laughs> mine is a little bit darker than this but think of it as that it's very pale it's got a little little tiny bit of a pinkish hue to it but not nobody would call it pink um so just something that is very beige <laughs> an off-white but a little bit darker almost tan kind of look to it so i'm going to show you compared to my skin so there's my skin tone so it is definitely lighter than my skin well maybe not um, my underside skin but it's definitely lighter than my skin but it's 
uh, in that same family. So once I've got that color established, now I can start looking around my clouds and saying, Ooh, where, where do I want this light tone to be? And I definitely have um, a bunch of it up here on the top. And again, less is more. I've already wiped my brush off on my paper towel. So I've got a, a light cloud up in through here. And everything to me in, in clouds is kind of like a gradient. It's always going to kind of, the color is going to shift from one color to the next without necessarily huge firm edges to it. So as I as I do this, that's I'm always thinking that. I'm always thinking, just be very careful. Don't make it so in your face, clean line, so to speak. Just kind of let all of these edges be nice and soft. I'm watching my photo to see where the where the light spots are. We've got a couple of little light spots up and through here. And now I'm I'm just kind of building those light spots, allowing them to kind of fade into the dark areas. And then once I've got the um, predominant light spots established, then I can just tweak those those tonal values in the um, where they transition in and out of the dark areas. So this is looking pretty good. Got a little tiny bit on here. As I run out of paint, that's where, uh, when I feel my brush getting drier, that's when I say, oh, well, it, my brush is a little bit drier. I can just pop this little tiny area over and through there. I've got just a very little bit of paint on my brush. So even though I'm using the same color, because I have very little bit of paint on my brush, this highlight becomes darker than the highlights over there. So I'm just um, utilizing that small amount of paint on my brush to give a, a highlight, but not as bright as these ones up here. I just put more of my highlight color on my brush because I see a very bright cloud up in through here. And there's just a little sliver of a, a dark area in between those. So again, I'm just gonna allow myself to really work this bright tone where I see it in in the cloud formation and again it doesn't always just have to be super uber uber bright this is I'm allowing to you know little dark spots to to stay and to um, fade into the the brighter spots and you know just allowing for those soft tones to happen I just keep picking up my light color at this point I see there's one a lighter one in through here and again they don't all have to be exactly the same formation I'm just uh, watching my photo I don't necessarily have the best imagination when it comes to putting really cool cloud formations in place so for me being able to just kind of look at the photo and say oh there's a light spot there and oh there's a light spot there or a dark spot there it helps make me make a much more interesting cloud formation than if I did it out of my head the ones out of my head they're very um, kind of systematic and not not as interesting as the ones that when I'm watching a photo I can say oh yeah that's that looks super cool I wish I had thought of that <laughs> but I, I, I'm not super creative with saying, oh, there should be a big cloud here and a tiny dark one there. But that's what happens with clouds. There's there's so many different variations or types of clouds depending on the um, what is happening in the atmosphere. It can have so many different effects on whether or not one cloud in that formation is dark versus light or whether or not they are super wispy or super puffy. And I'm not a cloud expert so I you know I have to just rely upon what I'm seeing in photos to help educate me on how I can pursue the the depth and the color variations and things like that in in the photos so I'm feeling like I'm getting a, a lot of great dimension in through here I just am gonna need to tweak some of these um, values a little bit but I've again getting my these light areas to intermingle I'm going to again just use a very little bit of paint on my brush as I'm coming over in through here giving just these little extra bits in through here this left side appears to be darker to me than that right hand side so this is where I'm just using the um, the remnants on my brush to kind of um, 
allow for these different gradients to happen. And this is looking super cool to me. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to go in and kind of finesse these darker areas and then I'll go and get those light areas. So this cloud in through here kind of intermingles with each other. I'm going to, um, I feel like I want to have a little bit um, more, a darker tone. Um, so I'm going to pick up some of my tan in through here and my gray. So I have tan and gray. I just need these two to kind of uh, blend a little bit better to e with each other. I'm picking up a tiny bit of red too. I feel like I feel like there's a little bit more warmth in this uh, energy in these clouds right in this pocket in through here. So I did pick up a little bit of red on my brush. Same thing with in through here. So right now I'm just watching my photo and saying, okay, time for me to finesse. So I just picked up some of my um, tan but that wasn't dark enough so I just picked up a little bit more brown and I'm going through and I'm saying okay well I've got a little light spot here I've got a pretty dark spot here but it fades into here so I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my tan just to make sure that that happens like that and anywhere you want some darkness you can always pick up more of that gray I'm thinking that this little area over here is looking pretty good. I don't think I have to do much more, maybe a little bit more lightness right in through here. So I picked up some of my um, beige color to pop just a little bit of lightness in through here. Again, I'm watching the photo. You can certainly be more carefree with yours and not have every single cloud in exactly the same space. Um, I do want to carry this tiny bit of red elsewhere so it doesn't stand alone. So I'm just going to bring it down, maybe it feels it down in through here, and we can pop a little bit over in through here. So if you do introduce a new color, something like that, make sure you carry it elsewhere. Like I feel there, I could use a little in through here. So I just wiped my, or put a tiny bit of water on my brush, and I'm almost putting like a little glaze of the red in through here on the edge of this guy in through here. Down here, it's gotta be a little bit darker. I'm going tan with a touch of brown. So tan with a touch of brown, I'm going to just hit this cloud in through here. Again, right now I'm just kind of finessing, making areas a little bit darker, a little bit lighter based on what I'm seeing in the photo, just kind of um, kind of floating around, <laughs> no pun intended, but a little pun intended, um, in order to just finesse these little dark areas and light areas because I have everything in place right now. So now this is the time where I'm just going to sit here. I just picked up some of my uh, beige plus white because I feel I can go a little bit lighter up in through here in some of these little peekaboo spots, a little bit of white on my dirty brush. So a little bit of white plus my beige up in through here. I can pop a little bit of lightness in through here, not much. I don't want it to go all the way white because I'm not seeing it all the way white in the photo. I'm just seeing shades of these colors, gradients. I'm not, it's not popping as super duper white to me, but um, it, there is definitely some lightness up at the top. So I'm making sure that I emulate that. I'm gonna pick up some more of my beige because I feel this guy could use it in through here. And then um, I'm picking up some more of my tan. I feel this guy in through here, maybe tan plus brown, needs a little bit more um, of the tan color because it's too dark to me up and through here. So this is where I've got to make a judgment call. So I'm wiping my brush off and I'm picking up a little bit more tan to get this to go a little lighter, maybe not 100% lighter, but definitely lighter. So tan, I did pick up a teeny tiny bit of my gray too because the tan was a little bit too light. So just making those little tiny adjustments as you go is how you're gonna um, build this into a really believable stormy-esque cloud. My tan plus a tiny bit of brown can also assist me in um, getting some of these darker areas to have a little bit more of that, you know, atmospheric dimension if you will so something like this works in through here i've got some um it's, it's looking pretty good i got some of this tan and brown i'm just popping these out a little bit more so tan plus brown is what i'm using right now to just kind of get that um cohesive or harmonious color 
throughout these. I've got a couple little bumps in through here, and then this kind of fades up in through here. So again, this is just my tan and a little bit of brown because I feel as if they these clouds really get pretty warm in their hue over here on the right hand side. So um, just allowing for that to happen. And then where am I headed next? I think I'm going tan plus a little bit of white in some of these areas. Tan plus a little bit of, oh, where do I want to do this? Down in through here. Yeah, that's going to work. Tan plus a little bit of white just to, again, get some, some brightness down here, but maybe not as bright as up there. So tan plus a little bit of white. And I keep just, I, I keep wiping my hand, my brush off on my paper towel. I think this could be carried up just a little bit further, this guy in through here. And again, I'm just watching the, the picture. So as I'm going through this, I'm saying, mm, I want this a little bit lighter. Mm, I want this a little bit darker. And again, just watching that formation to get those little billowing edges to, to happen in, in the cloud formation. And you could sit and fiddle with this for a really long time, have fun with it. I'm probably gonna fiddle with mine a little bit more just to, you know, if I feel I just picked up a little bit more brown to get into these guys up and through here. If I feel that I want a little bit more warmth to it, I'm gonna continue to add my brown and my, um, and maybe a little bit of that tan. If I need even more, I can hit it with, um, if I need those little bright pops, I can hit with a little bit more of my beige. So you just fiddle with it, allowing for these light spots and dark spots to keep emerging and keep growing and keep talking to one another. And then once you feel that you have it in as beautiful of a stormy, cloudy place as you want it, we're going to be using uh, our small brush or this, oh, we don't have a tiny brush for this one. We're gonna have a fun signature on this one, I tell you. Um, so we're gonna use this small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign my paintings in the bottom left or the bottom right. And I usually use a small detail round brush, <laughs> but I didn't plan properly for this painting. So I'm gonna show you a fun way how to sign your paintings with the butt end of your paintbrush. <laughs> so I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left, and I think I'm just gonna use that, um, that beige color that we used, and I'm just gonna put some paint on the tip of my brush. And I got a lot of paint, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lightly touch the the canvas and it's almost going to give it just this um you know i'm like dragging the paint through it it's really fun i like to sign mine with my initials if i can get my initials on this one that will be a miracle uh, but you could of course use any you know painting tool that you want maybe you actually have a small round brush at your disposal right now that you could be using. I'm almost getting it. Look at that. I can see my M. I can see the I of my last name. And then I do a little squiggly thing there. Well, look at that. See, it's almost exactly as I do with a regular brush. <laughs> you could, of course, sign the back of your painting too. So you can sign it whatever way works for you. I sign mine with my initials. You could use your full name, whatever you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool atmospheric lunar painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.